Welcome to Unfuck Your Brain, the only podcast that teaches you how to use psychology, feminism, and coaching to rewire your brain and get what you want in life. And now here's your host, Harvard Law School grad, feminist rock star, and master coach, Kara Lowenthal. Hello, chickens. So this is a little bonus podcast for this week. I interviewed one of my clients who just wrapped up Unfuck Your Brain. She had an amazing experience and she's just brilliant and hilarious and adorable. And I love her like I love all my clients and all of you. And I really wanted you guys to hear about her experience. It's been a while since I've done one of these and the program is always, I think, developing and changing and getting even better. And so I just wanted you guys to hear this and less about the program, but just because I think that it's really inspiring. I know for me, it was really, I'm inspired by my clients now, but especially when I was trying to do thought work, it was really inspiring for me to hear from people who were just like one step ahead of me on the path. So from me to where you are might be a couple of steps, but from you to where Jamie is, is really only a few steps, right? She only you know, learned about thought work and started doing this work about six months ago. And so much in her life has already changed. And while she's wonderful and outstanding, it's a pretty typical example of what happens when you really commit to applying thought work to your life. So I wanted you guys to hear the story, hear her story, hear how she worked through what her issues are and where she is. And you'll hear that like, Coaching is for real life, right? It's not like, oh, you learn some thought work and do it for three months, then your life is perfect and every and nothing ever bothers you ever again, right? That's not what we're doing. We're talking about like thought work to me is how do I live an examined conscious life with intention? Like knowing that, of course, there's going to be challenging times and negative emotion involved and I'm not always going to manage my mind perfectly and all of that, right? Of course, but it's just being awake in the world instead of asleep at the wheel. And I think that Jamie is an amazing example of making that transition. So I want you guys to hear her story and kind of learn and be inspired by what she's achieved. Hi, Jamie. Thanks for joining me today. Hi. So just introduce yourself if you don't mind and tell folks who you are. So my name is Jamie and I am a small business accountant in Toronto. I have my own business and that's, that's me. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody in Toronto or Canada who needs accounting, go to Jamie, any small business. So can you tell folks a little bit about what brought you to Unfuck Your Brain? What was going on with you? Why did you sign up for the program? So I was at a point in my life where I was very like confused with, with what I was going to do next. I had just come out of a, a relationship, a very like serious relationship, and I also was not working. I had my business, but I was kind of half-heartedly have my, had my business and didn't really know what my next steps were going to be. I, I had a lot of thoughts and feelings and was kind of in analysis paralysis maybe. Yeah, totally. So tell us a little bit about where you sort of got to all those issues. Like how did the work of the program help you resolve them and where are you about them now? So the first issue was uh, was the relationship issue, was the fact that I was single again and I was not happy about being single again. And the program helped me in the sense that it identified what, the actual issues were versus what I thought the issues were about me being in relationships or being out of relationships. And so it helped me to come up with new thoughts to guide me through the dating process. Mm -hmm. So I found that I was not, that I was dating kind of more worried about the other person liking me and wanting to be with me than me deciding if I wanted to be with the other person. Mm -hmm. So that was a really big thing. And I think that I stayed in a lot of relationships in the past for too long because of that. And now I feel like I'm dating from a more, just like a smarter, I would say actually a smarter way of dating for me right now is, is I'm more worried about myself and what I'm looking for and I'm okay being on my own and I'm okay taking my time and it feels good. So not dating for validation. That's what I was Yes. <laughs> Which is a big thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what about your business? How did that change? So it's completely different in the sense that it exists and I believe in it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> when we first started the program, I, well, I didn't even know. I thought, I don't even want to be an accountant. I actually think I hate accounting. It's not my calling. 
after doing all this schooling and, and I'm like, oh, it's not for me. I don't really know what I want to do. And you said something to me that really changed the game for me when you said that you didn't think that it was that I didn't like accounting. It was that I didn't think I could be successful as an accountant. And it was true. Mm-hmm. And, it, and that issue would have held true on whatever career path that I had decided to take from that point in time. And had I not been in this course, I don't even know, maybe I would have like hopped into another corporate role where, and then, you know, thought that that was creating my happiness or unhappiness again, and then hopped around again and again. But now I'm at a point where I am actually managing my thoughts and I am enjoying building my business. I think my business is going to work out. I'm already seeing evidence that it is. But in general, it's just a lot more fun being able to believe in myself. And obviously, we have those ups and downs. Of course. Yeah. And, but, now, but I can manage those ups and downs now. And I'm, I trust in myself enough to move forward. And, and I don't hate accounting, actually. And I also don't hate work. I yeah, thought I hated you know, work. work. That's <laughs> right. That's right. You were very attached to that story that you hated work. All work. Yeah, all, all work. work. All work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just had to marry someone where you have to solve that problem. Isn't it so much more fun to make it yourself? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I have to tell you one thing is that I used to always joke, like half heartedly joke, like, oh, it's fine. Like I just need to find like a rich husband and then I can like chill. Yeah. And now that joke doesn't even come out of my mouth anymore because I'm so yeah. excited that I'm just like killing it in my life for myself yes. and everything else is just crazy. Uh, so yeah. It's to just yes. date for also that was another thing that tied into my dating and I feel like now I'm just like yeah what if your soulmate like wants to be your house husband perfect well you go out and build your business he can take care of the laundry it's gonna work out great (laughs) yeah I love that so much and I think a lot of people experience that that's why I always work with people I'm like learn how to be happy where you are before you decide if you need to make a change because when you're not managing your mind you don't even know what the real problem is Mm -hmm. Right? Like, of course, who would want, who would think they enjoyed something if the whole time they were thinking, oh my God, I suck at this, I'm going to die. Like, you can't even tell what's going on underneath. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit, did you have any concerns about the program? Like, had you ever been in a group before? Were you worried about the price or the time commitment or anything else that you were concerned about? I guess my concern was really just the pricing because I was at a point where I wasn't working. So, (laughs) and so I had to wrap my head around the investment in the program and trusting that it was actually going to bring the value that that I wanted it to. And um, like from our first coaching call, I got value. So Mm -hmm. I, I feel actually like looking back at the investment, the investment is so, so, so worth it. And yeah, I, so I would go back and do it again. And thinking about a lot of money, like I spent in the past on therapy and you know, that I felt was an investment in myself. So after doing the therapy and investing in that, this seemed like the right next step. And it didn't seem like such a big commitment financially when I put it in that perspective as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what would you tell someone who is thinking about signing up for the program? Do you have any words of advice to them? If you're debating it, just do it. Because <laughs> seriously, you have, if, you, if you're even considering it, I think that that means that you're open to change and open to learning and you will be able to get so much out of this course. So yeah, I would say if you're on the fence, you're not sure, but you're open to the idea, then I think you should just do it. It's like a Nike slogan. Just do it. <laughs> yes. Yes. It was so, honestly, it was so beneficial for me. And I got a lot out of the program and things that you don't even think, like, it's not something that you can predict mm-hmm. is going to happen. It's, it's kind of like you just unfold and you learn so much about yourself. And yeah, it's really a no brainer. Thanks. Oh, I actually do want to ask you one last thing. Do you feel now like you have the tools to kind of deal with your own thoughts and feelings as they come up? I think often people worry that sort of they'll need help forever. Uh, No, I would say that I have been equipped with the tools that I need to move forward because I I know my brain now. Mm -hmm. So so when I see things, I'm like, ha, there's that thing again. There's that thought (laughs) coming up. And um, I know that that comes up for me and I know how to deal with it. And if it's something new, I still understand the framework and I still understand what's going on. 
conceptually. So I have the tools to to move forward. So yeah. I feel pretty pretty well well equipped. But you have to do the work, which is yeah. something that's good about being in the program is that it gets you into the groove of of meeting every week and of you know and of doing the workbooks and everything so that you can actually be accountable and do the work and then it gets you into a good groove to continue doing the work for yourself. Yeah, totally. That's the difference. I mean, one of the difference between the program and the podcast, right? It's like a lot of it obviously is personal interaction with me, but also it's just actually doing the work, having that structure and that framework, not just listening and being like, it would be nice if my brain just magically fixed itself from listening to this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your experience with everybody. I think that was super helpful and I'm so excited to see you become the, what did we call it in class? The Oprah of the accounting world. (laughs) Accounting. (laughs) I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to start building your confidence right away, you can download a free confidence cheat sheet at www.caralowenthal.com slash podcast confidence.